During their heyday, there was a multitude of joysticks released for the various 8 and 16-bit computers. From handheld joysticks to ones that looked more like airplane flight sticks, there was no shortage controllers to satisfy your gaming needs. However, if you wanted something closer to actual arcade quality parts, well, your options were limited. So here in 2018, Monster Joysticks have released their brand new Mini Monster Retro Gaming Joystick Kit. This do-it-yourself kit promises to deliver real arcade-like control home. Let's take an in-depth look at this in this episode. What is happening guys, Todd here. The folks at Monster Joysticks reached out to me recently and asked me if I'd be interested in taking a look at their new retro gaming joystick. I have reviewed quite a few game pads on this channel, however, I haven't reviewed a joystick yet, so I of course leaped to the opportunity to take a look at it. Monster Joysticks provided this kit to me free of charge for a review. This video represents my own thoughts and opinions on it and I was not compensated in any way to create this video. You can order the Mini Monster Retro Gaming Joystick Kit directly from the Monster Joysticks website. They have two different versions of it available. First is the premium version which comes with Sanwa arcade buttons and stick. This is priced at $71.49 and there are a couple colors to choose from. There is also a basic version priced at $45.49 which uses a less expensive joystick and buttons. In this video I'll be taking a look at the premium version. Both are compatible with a wide range of 8 and 16 bit retro consoles and computers. This includes the Amstrad CPC, the Atari 8 bit computers, the Atari ST, the Commodore 64, all the Commodore Amigas, Atari 2600, Atari 7800, and the Sega Master System. It'll work with pretty much any machine that uses the Atari controller or Sega Master System pinout. And there will be an adapter in the future that will allow it to also work with both buttons on the X68000 and MSX computers. But first things first, we need to build this thing up. Let's take a look at everything included in the kit. I would set this out approximately 30 to 45 minutes for the build process. The actual joystick mechanism itself is a Sanwa JLF TP8YT with a stock square gate on the bottom. This is the standard for most Japanese arcade cabinets and many joystick enthusiasts. Also included is a pair of dust covers for the joystick. My kit came with a blue ball top for the stick and a pair of matching blue Sanwa OBSF 30mm buttons. If you haven't used them before, Sanwa buttons are fantastic. The internal wiring for the stick and buttons, the nuts and bolts to assemble the stick and some rubber feet for the bottom of it. And inside this little pink bag is the interface board that you'll wire the stick and buttons to. There's a 9-pin D-sub connector on the back that you attach the cable that runs from the stick to your computer. There's also a little switch on the back besides the D-sub connector. We'll talk more about that later on. This black 9-pin cable connects the joystick to your retro computer. It's a standard 9-pin Atari or Sega Mega Drive style extension cable. And finally, the laser cut pieces that make up the shell of the joystick. They are cut from a high quality PETG material. To get started, we need to peel off the protective covering from the shell pieces. Peel back the outer paper to reveal the blue plastic film underneath. Peel off this film as well. Flip the piece over and do the same thing on the other side. This time there will be a white plastic film underneath. Remove that too. Repeat this for all six pieces of the plastic shell. This is the most time consuming part of the build process as the plastic films take some time to remove. After removing the protective coatings, I suggest cleaning all the pieces with a lint-free microfiber towel. Start by identifying the bottom of the case shell. It has four holes drilled in it and they are slightly offset to the right. Flip it over and add the rubber feet to the bottom of this piece. Now put a small plastic bolt up through one of the holes on the bottom and add two plastic nuts to it. Repeat this for all four holes. This will act as standoffs. Next, place the interface board on top of these screws with the D sub connector facing outwards. Use the remaining plastic nuts to secure the interface board down. Place the rear shell piece over the grooves on the back of the bottom piece. Due to the cutout in it, its orientation should be pretty obvious. Place a metal nut in the slot behind the interface board. Then put a bolt down to the top and screw it down. Now add the left side piece and secure it down with a nut and bolt. Flip it over and repeat the process for the right side piece. And do the same for the front piece. Take the top shell piece and place the large carriage bolts into the square cutouts. Their shape prevents these bolts from spinning. Now you can slide the joystick over these bolts and secure it in place with the large metal nuts. I advise tighten them down with a wrench or pliers to keep the stick in place. Place your dust covers down over the shaft and screw on the ball top. 
You can insert a flathead screwdriver in the bottom of the joystick to keep the shaft from spinning while screwing on the ball top. Snap in both of the buttons. Now we need to go ahead and wire it all up. You can follow the included printed instructions or the details on the website as to the wire's orientation. One interesting thing to note is that the stick can be configured as a left hand stick with the stick on the right and the buttons on the left. Check the instructions for more details on this. Go ahead and plug the 5 pin harness into the joystick. There's only one way for it to plug in. And plug in the wires for the buttons. The red and black wires can go to either spade connector as the buttons aren't polarized. I suggest now taking the time to use that lint free cloth again to make sure all the fingerprints are cleaned up. Place the top down on the case and secure it with the remaining 4 bolts and nuts. Finally, plug the cable into the back of the joystick and you're all done. With the build process out of the way, let's take a closer look at the joystick. The 9 pin cable is about 1.8 meters long or 6 feet. I really like the fact that they went with this kind of cable because its molded 9 pin connector will easily plug into machines like the Amiga 600 with its recessed joystick port. I was actually worried that the stick might not weigh enough and move around your table while in use, and I'm happy to report that that is not the case. And the stick weighs in just over 1 pound. Let's talk a bit about build quality. The PETG panels by themselves have some flex to them, however once assembled the shell is actually quite rigid with only a very small amount of flex for the top piece. So unless you plan to absolutely hammer on this thing, I don't feel it's going to fall apart on you. While on the subject of the top of the joystick, Monster Joysticks offers an optional artwork cover for the Mini Monster. This fits over top of the existing top piece and you can sandwich your favorite artwork in between the two. It's pretty cool. If you remember earlier during the build process, I mentioned that there was a little switch on the back of the joystick right beside the 9-pin connector. This switch controls the second button in the joystick up direction mapping. When the switch is in its normal position, the joystick and buttons behave as you would expect. However, if you flip the switch, the joystick up direction gets mapped to the second button. This is useful for games that are only designed with one button controllers and use the joystick up direction for things like making your in-game character jump. This feature can make these games much more enjoyable to play. And while we're talking about controls, we should go ahead and discuss the joystick and buttons themselves. The Samwa buttons and joystick in the premium kit are in a word, fantastic. If you're used to using cheap joysticks with poor quality leaf springs or crappy Atari 2600 style joysticks with a membrane based stick, you're in for a real treat. The Samwa buttons are great with their quick reaction time, smooth travel, and they're relatively quiet. These are not super loud like some high-end mechanical computer keyboards. I've used Samwa buttons in my Neo Geo joysticks in the past and they are in my opinion some of the best that you can buy. As far as the Samwa JLF joystick goes, it's pretty much the de facto standard in Japanese arcade cabinets. If you were to fly to Japan today and open up the first arcade cabinet you laid your hands on, more than likely it would have a Samwa JLF joystick in it, especially if the cabinet was set up for fighting games. This stick doesn't require a lot of pressure to move and it has a relatively short travel making it ideal for quick action games. And it's rebuildable, so if you wire out the micro switches, the restrictor gate, the actuator, or even the shaft itself, they can all be replaced. I haven't used the basic version of this kit with the less expensive buttons and stick, but they should be reasonably good quality too. And since they use the exact same cutouts as the premium kit, you can easily upgrade the Sanwa parts later on. Or perhaps choose a different brand of Japanese arcade parts like Sumitsu, who also builds some extremely high quality sticks and buttons, so you have lots of options for future upgrades. I've been using this stick for a while now and overall I've been extremely pleased with it. From the real arcade parts, to the solid construction and selectable second button action, to the ability to configure it as either a right hand or left hand joystick, this stick is almost perfect for fans of 8 and 16 bit computers. I also like the fact that I can use it on virtually all of my retro computers. Commodore 64, Amiga, Atari Abets, ST, all of them work really well with it. However, I'm sorry C64 mini owners, but this isn't the stick for you. I only have two minor critiques of the Mini Monster joystick. While I appreciate the molded 9 pin cable, I wish that there was some method to more securely fasten it to the back of the joystick. A good tug and it can come unplugged. While I never experienced this during actual gameplay, it's something to keep in mind. And the other thing is the edges around the top of the joystick shell while being rounded off can sometimes still dig into your hands. I simply readjusted how I placed my hands on the stick and it hasn't been an issue since I assembled it. And if you'd like to play with joysticks in your lap, then this won't be an issue at all. With all this said, I think Monster Joysticks have knocked it out of the park with the release of the Mini Monster Joystick. And with the upcoming adapter that will allow you to use it with an MSX and X68000 computers, this joystick can quite possibly serve the needs of all your retro 8 and 16 bit computers and mini consoles from that era as well. Massive thanks to the fine folks at Monster Joysticks for sending me a kit for review. Without their generosity, this video would not have been possible. Well guys, that wraps it up for this one. 
If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell icon to be notified of my future video releases. Also, I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on the Mini Monster Joystick. Likes, dislikes, or are you more of a gamepad kind of person? Let's talk. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.